Welcome to Paradox Jukebox, an unconventional podcast for the unconventional musician. This podcast is brought to you by Music on the Move Studios, a woman-led company working to help musicians move their careers forward through education and live events. I'm your host, Katie Thompson. Thanks so much for tuning in. On today's episode, I have pop artist Barry with me. She is originally from Dayton, Ohio. What, what, Ohio? Shout out, because I'm from Ohio, too. So, where are my Ohioans at? So anyway, again, she's from Dayton, Ohio originally, but she moved to Nashville, Tennessee a few years ago, and she has been really just working it ever since. And I got to tell you, I love Barry's music because it is so uplifting. It is dancey. It's kind of got this disco pop vibe to it, and it's just happy music, y'all. And who doesn't need more happy music in their life? And not only is her music super happy, but she as a person is just a happy individual. You can can't help but smile when you hang out with her, when you talk to her. Uh, I had the privilege of um, meeting Barry at the April Showcase at Music on the Move Studios hosted by Marathon Music Works, so we'll talk a little bit about that. And so I'm going to introduce you to her music. This is You by Barry. of you and when life hits us hard we love harder to know what i do if i didn't have you i'm wide awake there's no mistaking everything i feel you'll never change love will stay the same Welcome, welcome everyone to Paradox Jukebox. On today's episode, I have pop artist Barry with me. So say hi, darling. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for, for being on the show. Uh, I had an absolute blast playing on the April uh, showcase with you for Music on the Move Studios. That was just so much freaking fun. I know. I can't believe it. Is it two? Weeks? Was that two weeks ago now? Yeah, we're getting we're getting to two weeks. I think we're getting oh, the, to that point. I know it doesn't even seem possible. I I don't even understand how we're in the month of May right now. I know what is even happening. Mm-hmm. It's like 2020 didn't even happen, and now that everything is slowly coming back i'm like slow down (laughs) like wait (laughs) i know right everybody's like oh crap i actually have to like do things i have to wear makeup i have to wear real pants (laughs) right and and i'm seriously misjudging how long it takes me to get ready and how long it takes me to get places anymore like it's it's just been it's been a journey getting back to real life for sure (laughs) but that showcase was so great because that was my first show since I want to say January of 2020. Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So that, that was such a fun evening and just to be around so many badass women and seeing live music again and feeling safe doing it. It was just Oh my gosh, it was just everything. It was so life-giving, you know? I have to agree. And you know, I I feel spoiled because I've played a few of those showcases, but this last one, the the one that you were on, I'm Aaron did an amazing job with the lineup and Lauren, oh, who yeah. was who was playing Cajon that night, she and I just talked about it, you know, incessantly. Like, God, this is just the best lineup of artists that we have ever had, and truly, we felt like it was it was the best showcase yet, and you were such a big part of that. Oh, thank you so much. You know, um, you and Lauren were such a huge part of it. I could not imagine learning all of the songs you learned and you know you guys brought so much energy and you the both of you really nailed it as the hellcats um the house band you know sometimes you go into shows or situations and you're not sure who's 
going to be playing or it's your first time playing together. But I mean, gosh, even at our rehearsal together, everything came together so well. And you and Lauren were just so, you are so freaking talented. (laughs) Um, It was so much fun. And I loved how every artist was so different. Um, I felt like all of the genres were so unique and everyone kind of brought a little something something to the table and it was so fun it was so fun and everyone just crushed it I feel like I have like seven new girl crushes now (laughs) I'm I'm obsessed with everyone that was on that stage that night it was it was such a great time well I gotta tell you I I totally understand because it's you know even after learning all that music I mean of of course it gets ingrained into my brain and I just I can't (laughs) stop you know putting it on repeat but as I was driving back to Ohio, I was jamming out to your song, You. I, I know I told you in rehearsal, that is like my jam right now. I cannot get enough of that song. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, okay, so that, when when I hear stuff like that, that is literally what it's all about for me. You know, like, that, that song, um, it's man, I don't want to like toot my own horn or whatever, because so many incredible people, um, have brought that song to life. And, you know, my co-writers on that song, Jordan Phillips and Adam Stark are, um, say it until I'm blue in the face (laughs) are literally some of the most talented people. And I'm, I, I just feel so lucky to work with so many incredible people and then hearing you and Lauren bring it to life too. That song just means a lot to me. And, you know, it was my first single that I had ever released into the world um, as Barry. And, you know, it, it was such a journey getting there because I had done so much, so much of my career in Nashville was spent kind of doing background vocals and giving life to other people's music, which I'm very passionate about as well. You know, I love a good harmony. I love watching my friends sing and elevate and kind of being in the background and watching them shine too. But that song, You, it was the first song I wrote where I was like, huh, I think, I think this is special and I really kind of want to share it with people and all I've ever wanted to do with music and with my career is to make people happy, to bring a smile to people's faces for them to hear a song and like maybe do a little dance and just feel good. You know, like there's so many dark moments in life. And if my music can make someone dance or make someone happy or kind of, sing along to a hook that they didn't even know got stuck in their head then then I'm kind of I'm I'm doing what I was put on earth to do so anytime anyone is like oh your song is so great it's so fun it just like makes my heart flutter it never gets old (laughs) and I'm so happy that I get to share it with people because that's you know that's what it's all about and that's what I missed so much of in 2020 it's just sharing it with people you know well and you're Lauren and I both were talking about your stuff after our rehearsal and we were like man this all of her music is just so danceable and and it's true (laughs) all of your music is so danceable and it's it's just it it is uplifting (laughs) it is so uplifting and and it's so funny because you know like I said like with all of the different artists that were on that showcase I mean you've got you got somebody like Monty Mater who is like your hardcore rock and roller and then you've got Catalina who's got this beautiful Latina feel and all of her music is just so gorgeous and then there's Mary Jennings who has this like super dark like EDM pop thing and then (laughs) and then there's you and your music is just like I'm gonna make you dance and I'm gonna make you (laughs) smile because life is awesome and we're finally out of 2020 (laughs) yes and it's so funny because I hunted down Mary and was like will you please write with me so Ah! I can access those like dark moody feelings (laughs) because that was amazing and like 
you know, I totally understand that life is very yin and yang. There's going to be the happy moments and the sad moments. Um, but I don't know. I, I feel like most of the songs I write tend to be the more upbeat, kind of pop, dancey, groovy things. Yes. And, you know, I I kind of lend a lot of that to my upbringing. Um, my parents are so funny. They, um, I feel like every memory I have of music with them is us in our living room in Dayton, Ohio, and, like, uh. the sun is leaking in, and my dad's reaching for, like, earth wind and fire on vinyl or saturday night fever on (laughs) vinyl and we're just like dancing to disco and you know disco you either love it or you hate it i think you can guess what side of the coin i'm on (laughs) i am like oh my gosh the more disco the more like sizzly violins in the back the dancing everything i I feel like their music, one, brainwashed me, (laughs) (laughs) and two, just made me like, you know what? I like dancing in my living room, and that's what, that's honestly what got me through quarantine and Mm -hmm. COVID, Um, you know, Dua Lipa's album, Future Nostalgia, I feel like I trauma bonded with that album oh wow because because I literally had it on repeat blaring dancing home alone because my husband his job was still essential um so I was home a lot alone by myself Mm -hmm. um but I was like I need to dance and you know move and feel good or I'm going to cry. And of course there's moments you have when life is sad. And and those are moments that are just as valuable as the happy. But I think with my music, I definitely know I can bring the happy to the table. And maybe after a write with Mary, I'll be able to get in your feels a little bit too. <laughs> I love it. Well, she'll she'll definitely bring you into your feels because that's what Mary does. Um, yeah. But no, I oh, I love it. I love that you have such a such a, a love for disco because a lot of people don't. <laughs> you know, look, and, and I will be completely honest. I was one of those people for a very long time. I was really not into disco, but again, just like you, it was my mom who yes. kind of was just like, okay, I know you don't like this, but you should listen to this. And so I think that, you know, I'm a little bit more open to disco now, but when I was, you know, <laughs> when I was listening to to all of your music, I went, wow, there's like, there's literally a disco bass line in every single one of these songs and I am so here for it. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's definitely some, some disco flair in there. And it's so funny because it's funny that you mentioned the bass line that's like, I think in another life or maybe in another quarantine COVID situation, if that ever happens again, I would pick up a bass guitar because I love, I love a good bass line yes. hook. And I love like when things just strip down and it's just the bass and the bass is just like moving and grooving. And I love like a little wiki, wiki, wiki with the guitar. <laughs> and that's, that is all straight up disco and funk my parents loved funk I'm pretty sure my parents just went dancing all the time yeah. and left me with my grandma so. <laughs> <laughs> oh That's my gosh awesome. I know it's crazy <laughs> my parents my parents were disco like king and queen like okay get this yes. my my dad had the platform shoes that had the goldfish oh. in them oh my god that is how hardcore disco my dad was and okay he... but now you just made me want to buy those shoes yeah. for like the next show 
<laughs> I'm, I'm sure that there is like a, a, a pair of platform shoes out there that have like fake fish in them now. Cause I mean, obviously that, yeah. you know, it, it was oh. back in the day, it wasn't considered that cruel, but I mean, today I think, you know, Peter would probably have it, have yeah. a go and at it, but <laughs> literally as soon as those words were coming out of my mouth, I was like, that's not a good one. <laughs> like, <laughs> unless I can like unscrew the shoe, feed them a little and then not dance in them because right. I'd be shaking the shit out of their shoes all night long. <laughs> yeah. My my dad told me that really like after you bought a pair of those shoes that the fish maybe lasted a week if you're lucky. Oh, no. And I'm like, Dad, that is terrible. He goes, Yeah, it really wasn't a good idea. And I'm like, <laughs> Well, number one, like, how how in the world did you not like break the little fish tank in there? He goes, oh. I'm not even really <laughs> sure how that worked. I'm like, Okay, well, I'm just glad that these things don't actually exist anymore. But I'm pretty sure that there's right. like a there's a, a version out there that has like, you know, little plastic goldfish in them. So there has to be. And when and if I find it, I will send you the link. Please, please <laughs> That's do. like my new mission for the weekend. <laughs> I'm going to find, I'm going to find the platform shoes with a fake little goldfish in it that dances around. That's amazing. And if those don't exist, I'm calling a patent yeah. and I'm going to make them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what a terrible investment to no. just buy <laughs> shoes with a live fish in them. Like, how uh, depressing would that be if uh, you get home from, like, the club or wherever you are, and the fish is just dead? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's horrible. Sad. It's sad. It's very sad. <laughs> oh no. Oh my gosh. I wonder if that's, like, an Ohio thing. Well, I mean, this goes were huge back in the day. They but were. you and I are Ohio gals. That's right. Right. Were you raised in Ohio too? Yeah, yeah. I was raised in uh, in Delaware. It's about thirty minutes north of Columbus. Okay, that's right. I'm from I'm from Dayton originally, um, yeah. in a small town called Bellbrook. But you know, Ohio, there's not a lot to do. So I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure back then there was even less to do. So you just go to a disco and dance your little heart out. That's yeah. That's about it. Back in the day. Yep. <laughs> That or you were, oh, you know, drag racing your your hot rod, I guess, because that's I mean, right? that's at least what my dad did. <laughs> Which is also not safe. <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Oh man. <laughs> so uh so let me let me ask you this. Um what uh what are your thoughts on like, you know, the current pop scene and what are some of the main differences that you've been compared to uh, like over the years in your music. So like when, when people talk about your music, who, who do they kind of put you in line with? Yeah. Um, the current pop scene, I'm totally here for. I feel like it's so diverse right now and pop has so many different, um, genres now and it's just kind of all encompassing. I think social media has, has a huge thing to do with it. And of course I was one of the people who swore I wasn't going to download TikTok. <laughs> and then three days into quarantine, I'm like learning a dance to a Doja Cat song that I'd never heard before <laughs> filming myself. <laughs> Love it. But, you know, I, I'm kind of here for pop music right now. It's really diverse. I think that people and the people making the music are diverse, um, which I don't know. It just seems like everyone has a spot to land and everyone can find someone to relate to on the scene now. Um, That's beautiful. Billie Eilish is killing me right now. Like <laughs> she literally, she wore baggy clothes for like, what her entire career and then one day it's just like also I'm gonna be on the cover of Vogue I'm gonna wear this sexy little piece and life's too short she basically was like can I cuss I can cuss on this right absolutely go for it she was like fuck it I'm gonna do what I want because life's too short and people had opinions about it but it goes back to like she's doing what she wants to do right. and I feel like that is pop music right now people are doing what they want to do people are singing about what they want to sing about 
Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion wrote a song about what women like in the bedroom. And it was a huge ordeal when I've been hearing about what men want in the bedroom <laughs> for my entire life. It's a very female empowered movement right now that's happening yes. in the pop world. And I obviously am here for like anything female empowerment. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm loving pop music right now. Um, and for a while, like, I don't know, maybe like four or five years ago, it, it seemed like a lot of pop was like sad pop. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, you know my heart now. <laughs> it's like a very upbeat pop kind of gal. Um, I'm, I'm loving all of this new kind of like upbeat throwback, um, paying homage to, you know, the disco and the funk. I feel like we're getting such a fun fusion of pop music right now. Um, and as far as who I get compared to, which is a complete honor, um, I've been compared to like a Katy Perry, Betty Who love child. Yeah, I love it. And I'm all about it. Katy Perry was and is one of my biggest uh, I'm just like obsessed with her she can do no wrong she cut her hair and bleached it people are like she's going crazy I'm like I am obsessed <laughs> like, <laughs> she's, she's just so great and then Betty Who is I saw her open for Panic at the Disco um that was honestly one of the last shows I saw live too mm. um but she opened and it was just her and these two male backup dancers on this massive stage and they literally burned it down. Nice. And again, just watching her dance and having her music be so danceable. And if you haven't like listened to or looked into Betty who she's incredible. Um, but I was just blown away. I'm like, okay, now I need two fabulous male backup dancers. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's just incredible. And I love, um, I love how open and loving and accepting she is. And she's really used her platform um, for LGBTQIA rights, which is so near and dear to my heart. Um, but it's just... To, to even be like in the same sentence of those two queens <laughs> is everything to me. So I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm doing something right. And and it feels authentic to me. So, you know, I'm I'm always honored to get compared to to people, but I, I do hear the two of those pretty pretty frequently. <laughs> That's awesome. That's fantastic. So yeah. yeah. I, I, I agree I agree so much with you about, you know, this this awesome movement that's happening in pop music right now where, you know, women are taking back their power and it's it's about what we want and necessarily not giving a flying fuck about what anybody else wants. <laughs> yes. We're uh, it's so easy to you know, and especially in the past, like I feel like women were Oh my gosh, have you seen the Britney Spears documentary? I'm like totally yes. getting excited. Yes, I just watched that literally like, I don't know, I don't know, probably last month. Like Britney 
Brittany walked so we could run. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and, and I love Brittany. I'm such a huge Brittany stan. And, um, but watching that and kind of realizing like, wow, peak of tabloid, everyone is looking at her to be this kind of prim, improper pop star. She was one of the biggest of the time, right in line with like the boy band hype, the peak of tabloids. People are like mowing her down in their cars to get photos of her and critiquing every single thing she did. And she's just like, I never said I was your role model, you know, like the guys get on dance and they grind up on their microphone cases. And I do one, I wear one sexy outfit and get completely railed for it. You know, it's like, it's unbelievable. So, and, and that was only in the 2000s. Like we're, we're still kind of, and obviously we've made a ton of progression with, you know, the Me Too movement and with women being more vocal about their experiences um, and maybe people realizing like, okay, wow, being a woman, you, you have thoughts and you have feelings <laughs> and you, <laughs> yeah. you're a human. No, well, you're not perfect. You have wants and desires and sometimes those are sexual. Oh my gosh. It's like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like Brittany was definitely one of the, one of the first, obviously there were some before her sure is saying she doesn't need to marry a rich man because she is a rich man there's so many like incredible women who have paved the way to lead to where we are right now and I'm so excited for where we are right now you know (laughs) I couldn't agree more and I feel like we're you know we're only going to go up from here and things are only going to get better for women in the music industry and I mean and this is obviously this is not just pop this is not just country or rock I mean it's it's every it's every genre and you know country music unfortunately right now like mainstream country radio isn't playing women because they don't think it sells which you know we all know is bullshit And I just, I'm so ready for the country industry to follow suit with the pop industry and allow these female artists to shine and go, look, I am just as creative. I am just as sellable. I am just as marketable. And I think the fact that it's a conversation now, like, I feel like I've seen female country artists speaking up about the inequality and the airplay and how there are so few women getting airplay in comparison to their male counterparts and even more so black country artists and country artists of, you know, of different color. It's, it's all becoming a conversation. And I honestly think it starts with conversation. We need to figure out like, okay, you know, this music doesn't all have to fit into this tiny box. Mm -hmm. And the more we open it up, the more everyone benefits, the more voices and stories we hear and the more that that contributes to humanity as a whole. I'm, I'm so here for it. Um, Artists like Mickey Guyton and Stephanie Jacques, who are two black country artists um, that you may not have heard of, are starting to pave the way and show up and be these louder voices. And I I love it. I'm yeah. here for it. I stand behind it. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. I just um, uh, I just discovered Mickey Guyton uh, not that long ago at the you know the behest of a friend, and then you know and then there's also Yola. You know, yes, oh Yola's amazing. She's uh, incredible. I just got <laughs> she's incredible, and not only is she just a phenomenal musician, but she is one hilarious human being. I had, <laughs> I had the honor and privilege of hanging out backstage at the Two Nashville with Love show, the Tornado Benefit. 
Yeah. Yeah. So oh. I was I was backstage hanging out with her and Ashley McBride, and I swear to you, this woman Yola, she had me in stitches. I had tears like streaming down my face. She's so freaking funny. Oh my gosh! And isn't it good when they're funny and nice and talented oh and gosh. getting what they deserve? I mean, they obviously she deserves that and so much more. Oh, I um, agree completely. Uh, I'm I'm I, so I excited for her new album that. too. Oh, when does it come? I'm I'm excited too. I need to I need to get on that. <laughs> I don't know when it gets released. I think she has like one single out right now, so I'm waiting with bated breath for the rest of it. <laughs> Yes, but but honestly, like I think that's what it's all about. It's people like us getting excited, talking about these artists that aren't white men singing country music. Yes. Oh my God. It's yes, one hundred percent. Like been there, done that, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. No, because you know I have. I have friends that are white men who are country artists and I love them and they're great and they're talented. Um, but I think there's space for everyone. Yes. And when the space is limited or it's like a club you have to claw your way into, it kind of sucks. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited where pop music is going, but I'm honestly really excited about, where country music is going because I think I think country music really really needs a little more diversity too and I think I think that conversation has definitely gotten started um which is awesome it's a conversation that's long overdue I agree (laughs) way overdue well I I really enjoy just, you know, being able to have this kind of discussion with another artist who's, you know, I mean, you're in the pop industry. So, you know, you're in the thick of, you know, all of this inclusivity and diversity. And it's so great. It's like you said, you know, there's so many subgenres that are being birthed out of this. And when country music finally decides to follow suit, I feel like the world is just going to be a, a much better place because of it. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be <laughs> even more beautiful. I'm like, I can't wait. I'm so excited for, and I mean, I think that kind of speaks to society too. I think that people are becoming more accepting and more loving. And I think that honestly falls on culture sometimes and what you're being fed, yeah. you know, and if you're being fed, music from people that don't look like you are, or you're only being fed music from people who do look like you, then where do you expand and where do you grow and where do you learn? And so I think music is a beautiful way that connects people, but I think it's a beautiful way for people to tell their stories who maybe haven't had the same opportunities to do so in the past. So I am I think it's I think it's a trickle down effect. I think a lot of people have kind of um woken up to some of the some of the shitty stuff that's been going on um in our nation um and to the oppression that's been going on. Not to get oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm a happy pop artist <laughs> like really deep. But it's true, it's true. I think everyone benefits when everyone's voices are heard and when that happens and when it's more equal and when we get more diversity in country and in pop and, you know, other in rap and everything, it's, it's going to be better for everyone, period. I agree. Well, and I I think you just found uh, (laughs) content for you and Mary to write about. (laughs) Yes. Right. Oh my gosh. Mary, if you're listening, let's go. (laughs) I'm ready. (laughs) Uh, That's beautiful. All right, darling. Well, I think that's going to just about wrap up all the time that we have. But before we go, I do want you to tell everybody where they can find you and your music. Yes. So my name is Barry, I am a pop artist. If you haven't gotten that yet, <laughs> you can find me um, 
everywhere. My music is on Spotify, on Apple Music. Um, there's a lot of artists with the last name Barry out there. So probably the safest way to make sure you find me specifically is to find me on social media. So my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of that, my handle is going to be the very same thing. And it's O Hey Barry. And that's with two H's in the middle, like O H H E Y Barry. Like you're saying, Oh, Hey Barry. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then from there, there's links. My website is www.ohheyberry.com. And that's got links to all of my music, SoundCloud, Spotify, whatever you listen to, you know. Katie can give you my phone number and I will literally text you my stuff. <laughs> I love talking to people and meeting new people. So <laughs> unhealthy boundaries right there. It's <laughs> I I will be the first to say I am not gonna give out your phone number, but I will have Thank links. <laughs> I will have links to your socials and your website in the show notes for everybody though. <laughs> gosh amazing Katie (laughs) this has been so much fun I feel like we could talk for like another hour (laughs) oh easily absolutely well okay so I'll tell you this let's let's try to cap it because then I'll have you back on and then maybe we can talk for like another half hour 45 minutes the (gasps) next time Oh my gosh. Amazing. Yes. I love it. See, so I, I have this all planned out. So everybody that Perfect. I've had on the podcast already, I'm like, nope, you're coming back for another interview. Don't worry. <laughs> amazing. And then we're going to take on Ohio. Amen. Tour Ohio. Yeah, we've already decided <laughs> that uh, that Ohio is is not ready for the uh, Lucky Penny Slister- Sisters slash Barry tour, but it's going to yes. happen. <laughs> It has to happen. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, darling. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you again for playing the showcase in Nashville. And um, I just, I can't wait to see you again. I'll actually be back in Nashville at the end of this month because my sister and I are going to play the showcase. So hopefully we can, awesome. uh, we can catch up and, you know, I can introduce you to my sister and we can all talk about how we're going to take over Ohio. Yes, that sounds great. And I will probably just be at the show anyway. Oh, so, love it. Live music's coming back, and I need it in my life every day. Preach. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All awesome. right. Well, thanks, darling. Of course. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Everything I feel, it'll never change. Love will stay the same. I don't Thank you so much, Barry, for being on the show today, sweetheart. You are the best. If you want to check out her music, you can find her at ohheyberry.com. She's on iTunes and Spotify and wherever you get your music. Links to her music will be in the show notes. There will be a link for you and a link for her new single, 16. If you want to learn more about Paradox Jukebox, you can find us at musiconthemovestudios.com backslash Paradox Jukebox. And if you want to learn more about me, you can find me at katiethompsonmusic.com. Many, many thanks to our founder at Music on the Move Studios, Aaron McClendon, for this awesome, awesome theme song. And we will see you next episode, friends. Toodaloo, buckaroos. Bye.